Today, we're going to talk about what I think might be the most common myth in all of cooking, that searing seals in the juices. Now, a lot of people know that this isn't actually true. You might be one of those people who knows this isn't true. And I certainly thought I was one of those people who knew this isn't true. But when I started working on this video, I wondered, how do I know this isn't true? So I devised a test, one that I don't think has been done before. And I discovered this myth might actually be true. Hear that sizzle? That's the sound of droplets of water from the steak flashing the steam. And it's our first bit of evidence that a crust isn't watertight and that searing doesn't seal in the juice. Even after flipping this steak, we still see a plume of steam escaping through the crust on top. Where the meat meets metal, high heat rapidly evaporates water and concentrates the proteins, amino acids, with naturally occurring sugars in a desiccation zone. This combination of ingredients cascade through reactions collectively known as the Meyer reaction, and it creates the appealing color of a seared crust and much of the steak's flavor. If we get really close, we can get a better look at what's going on. As the desiccation zone continues to dry out, these proteins and sugars also form a brittle glassy layer that's not unlike hard caramel. This crust is supposedly what seals in the juices. But just beneath the crust is the boiling zone, where water vaporizes into steam. Because liquid water expands nearly 1,800 times in volume when it turns into steam, the pressures in this zone are extreme, and they erupt through the brittle crust like volcanoes. This leaves the crust riddled with cracks and fissures that prevent it from ever becoming watertight. But they do give the crust an appealing, crispy texture. Below the crust and the boiling zones is the conduction zone where temperatures quickly drop below boiling and heat conducts slowly towards the core. No matter how hot your pan or how charred the crust, the temperature the food feels is limited to the boiling point of water in the meat. Trying to cook your steak faster with a ripping hot pan or grill only increases the thickness of the boiling zone, overcooking more of your steak, and risks burning the crust. So while I think all of the evidence is that the crust is leaky and doesn't seal in the juices, perhaps it's still holding in more juice than if there was no crust at all. And we can test this possibility with sous vide cooking. But first, if you're new to this channel, welcome, and thank you for watching. My name's Chris Young, and I'm the co-author of Modernist Cuisine and the co-founder of Chef Steps. When I'm not creating videos like this one, I create cooking tools for a living, like the Joule sous vide circulator, and most recently, the combustion predictive thermometer. It's a wireless thermometer with eight temperature sensors that also tells me when my food will be done, which I find incredibly useful when reverse searing steaks, slow roasting large cuts of meat, a Sunday night roast chicken, or slowly smoking the perfect brisket. If you're interested in learning more about the predictive thermometer, you can click here or go to my website combustion.inc. And if you do go, or if you're already a customer, thank you so very much. But now, let's find out if the crust on this steak does hold in some of the juices while it cooks. Okay, so the steak that was seared and then cooked sous vide lost about 11% of its starting weight during the searing process and then another 10% during the sous vide cooking process while the steak that was only cooked sous vide just lost 10% of its starting weight. So the weight of all this evidence, see what I did there, is that searing does nothing to seal in the juices. Myth busted. Or is it? Here's the thing. Juiciness isn't actually an objective measurement of how much moisture is in our food. Sensory scientists have looked at this and they've shown that after just the first few chews, most of the moisture that can be squeezed out of our food is already gone swallowed while we're chewing. Now, we've all had the experience of eating a piece of steak that's initially really juicy, but quickly becomes dry and mealy as we're chewing. That's because for the food to stay juicy, the moisture has to come from us, or more specifically, our saliva. I know, it's a little bit gross to think about this, 
but there's a lot of evidence that food that looks and smells great isn't just appealing, it's literally mouthwatering. So while I knew all of the arguments about why searing doesn't seal in the juices when I started working on this video, it occurred to me I've never seen reports of anyone trying to measure juiciness where it really matters, in our mouths, while we're eating. So that's the question I want to answer. Does searing a steak not only make it look, smell, and taste better, does the crust also make the steak juicier? So I'm going to do something particularly disgusting to see if I can measure a difference in juiciness. I'm going to use these cotton balls to soak up all the saliva in my mouth, leaving me parched. Then I'm going to take a slice of the unseasoned steak that's been seared and cooked sous vide. I'll chew it for 20 seconds without any swallowing before um, spitting it into this paper cup so that I can measure how much juice my mouth has added. I told you this would be gross. Then I'll do the same thing for another slice of the steak that hasn't been seared, just cooked sous vide. I'll do this a few times so that I can figure out whether the seared crust gets my mouth watering enough to make the seared steak juicier than the unseared steak. It's actually quite surprising. It's a much bigger effect than I would have expected, and I'm going to try a few more just to make sure. So I think that the myth that searing seals in the juices is actually true, but not because it seals in the juices, which it obviously doesn't. In my experiment, the slices of unseasoned and unseared steak gained an average of 20% of their weight as I chewed. But the seared slices made my mouth water more, and they gained an average of 50% of their weight as I chewed. Now, keep in mind that both of these slices of steak were unseasoned. Some salt and pepper would have been nice. Nevertheless, searing made the steak 30% juicier where it counts, when I'm eating it. So the takeaway I'd like to leave you with today is that the flavor and appeal of food isn't something that can be objectively measured with scales or thermometers. Our perception of seemingly objective things like the juiciness and texture of a steak is actually quite subjective. And it has as much to do with what you bring to the food as how the food was cooked. And I've changed my opinion about the myth that searing seals in the juices. While the explanation is completely wrong, this culinary saying captures the obvious fact that a well-seared steak really is more mouthwatering and delicious. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching.